Hi everyone, my name is Ken. Welcome to This House. Today we are in the Central West End neighborhood of St. Louis, Missouri, exploring a Tudor Revival style house. Now this house boasts some incredibly unique features, even from the curb. So if we look up, we can see the drama masks that are carved into the facade and supporting the cantilever. We can see the barrel vaulted ceiling soaring above, and these all intersect with each other, creating a groin vault, which is not something we've seen yet in a house. So what do you say let's go inside and check it out? Come on. Before we see inside, I'll share with you all the interesting history of this house. The land it is on was originally zoned for three commercial buildings before the neighborhood bought it, as we can see in this newspaper clipping. Pershing, the street it sits on, was called Berlin Avenue up until World War I, when the name was changed. Dr. and Mrs. Gustav Lippmann purchased the land and built this house in 1913, modeled after homes they had seen on holiday while in Nuremberg, resulting in this Tudor Revival style house. We've just walked inside and we are now in the ante hall of this house. If we look up, we can see that the ceiling barrels and vaults with the curve of the glass surrounding the door. And now making our way into the actual stair hall, we are greeted by this rounded stained glass window, and we can really appreciate this over the boxed in radiator. Now there is a bathroom off to this side, and we'll look at that in just a little while. First, I want to talk about these stairs. So let's look at this really intricate scroll work that comes down along the spindles. Now, as we continue past the stair hall, we come to the first room. And of course, let's take a moment to look at this flat archway and how ornate it is with the different layers of trim. Now, come on in here and we can see that this has the historical wallpaper and paneling surrounding the space with another section to the room over here. Now, there are some really interesting features to point out here, like this chair up in the top of the archway. And then, of course, there are the diamond paned windows here with a rounded niche above them. Crossing over to this side of the room, once again, we see another one of these boxed in radiators with its decorative shelling and another rounded window with a cast iron inset up in the rounded section. So let's just take a moment to pan around the space and then we'll move on to the next one. Now moving on to the next space, this takes us into a room with barrel vaulted ceilings. And one of the most striking things is just the paneling that surrounds this room, as well as the wallpaper and murals that soar above us here. Of course, there is a historic crystal chandelier hung right in the center. And if we look up to this side, these windows, their barrel vaults actually cut into the larger barrel vault, creating a groin vault. As we make our way through this room, there is a door here that goes to the kitchen, and we'll see that in a moment. But just see if you guys can find the secret passageway that's in this house. And I won't leave you guessing for too long. It's right here. So let's go ahead and open this up and come on through here. This takes us into a secret hidden study. So of course, one of the things that we notice right off the bat, if we look up, we can see the timbers that are embedded into the ceiling with a stucco in between. And this is not something that we've seen in the house quite yet. Now, as we bring our focus back down, we can look around and see all of these built-in bookcases. There are these really wide pine panels on the walls, and they actually have dentil molding that runs about the height of a chair rail. And as we make our way around this room, we come to a large window that has a beautiful view of the backyard. And then there's a door that exits out onto a deck. And we'll see the backyard in just a little while. So come on back through here and let's go see the kitchen. 
Now making our way out of the hidden office, we come back into this room. And of course, this is the door that I said we would take later. So let's come on through here. And this is going to take us into the kitchen. And of course, this is all newer. We can see that there's really not that much that is original here. So let's just start to look around the space. Of course, there are these vintage windows that most likely are not original to the house. But if we turn around, we can see that there is a built-in plant shelf over this window. And this looks to be of about the same vintage of this house. Now off to this side is the door that takes us out to the backyard and we'll explore this very last. In the meantime, let's just take a quick glance around here and explore the rest of the house. Now there is something really fascinating to point out in this kitchen. So of course, these are the maid stairs that run up behind me here. So let's just poke our head around this corner and take a look at the old dumbwaiter. Now, of course, this is no longer functioning as we did not actually see an opening in the kitchen. However, historically, maids would have prepared food and then put them on trays inside of the dumbwaiter and then hoisted them up the steps. And of course, I'm not going to make us take this maid stair today. We are going to take the grand stair as we usually do. So come on through here. And I know we already saw this, but let's just take a moment to really appreciate how this banister flares out and the craftsmanship that would have gone into us. Now, what do you say we go check out the rest of the house? Come on. As we begin our ascent into the rest of the house, we still have three more stories of this home to see. So this is first going to take us up to a landing. And this is our first time seeing a boxed newel post. Of course, the molding on this is fairly simplistic as is consistent with the styling of this home. Now off to this side is a door that runs between the steps. This is the maid stair and this is where we just saw the dumb waiter. And it's very curious that the maid stair does not actually continue all the way up to the second floor by itself. However, it feeds into the same landing that the residents of this home would have been using. Also here is the first time that we are seeing a crystal doorknob and glass panel doors. So let's keep an eye out for these details as we traverse the rest of the house. And opposite of this door is a stained glass window that contains the same motif as the stained glass window that we first saw whenever we entered the house. And of course, this one is rounded as well. And we can see some warping up towards the top, but really no sagging towards the bottom. This is in incredibly good condition for its age. Finally arriving at the second floor, off to this side is what would have formerly been the maid's quarters and possibly the nursery. So let's go ahead and explore this. Of course, today this is set up more as an owner's suite. So we walk into this closet and there are these porcelain handles that are on the closet doors. Of course, this is all newer, but it really helps to blend the styles of the old and the new together. So come on through here and this will actually take us into the owner's bedroom. First, there's this lovely window seat that has a radiator underneath it and a lot of windows that look out over the very private backyard. Off to this side, we can see evidence of a former fireplace. Of course, this has been removed and there's now a radiator in this corner. Now, as we cut back across the room, we are going to come to the owner's bathroom. So let's just take a peek in here. There are some interesting features to point out, such as some more intricate millwork. And we can, of course, see that this is all newer. There's a newer shower, newer toilet, and a newer vanity. And this has all been very tastefully done in a way that really blends it with the styles of the rest of the house that we've seen so far. And there are a few more details to point out. So over here, we have another one of these really long cabinets that just kind of recedes into the wall. And behind this door, there is an older radiator that's hiding out in the corner. Now, passing out of the bathroom, there are a few things left to mention as far as details go in the space. There are these beautiful crystal doorknobs. So let's take a moment to see this. And as we pass through this door, of course, this is boxed in very intricately. So let's continue forward and this will take us back out into the stair hall where we can see a few more details. So above the steps here is a cabinet. It also has this really intricate crystal doorknob with its original hardware. So we can just take a peek in here and we can see the wooden shelves and the beadboard that surround the space. 
As we begin making our way further into this house, we can now see the banister that overlooks the stairs in the front of the home. So let's just peek over this. And this is the staircase that we first saw whenever we entered the house. And off to this side is another bathroom. So let's go on in here and explore this. Of course, there's another crystal doorknob that allows us to enter this room and a compact radiator off to this side. As we make our way further in, we can see that there is a barreled ceiling right here that covers the shower and tub combo. And off to this side, there is a pedestal sink, a full toilet, and above all of this is another beautiful stained glass window, and we can see the original hardware and pulley system still intact on this window. And if we turn around this way, there's a medicine cabinet, so let's go ahead and open this up and just take a peek inside of here. Moving along and at the end of this hall is another bedroom. Now come on in here. This room is fairly large, and of course, over on this side, there are triple hung windows, and we can see that we have six over six grids and then two over twos. And these still have what appear to be their original latches and pulley systems as well. Now in this corner, we might be looking at this thinking, is this a piece of furniture? Well, it's not. This is actually to conceal the radiator and create a more usable surface above it. And off to this side of the room is a full-size closet. So let's take a look at this. Now the crystal doorknobs have changed a little bit and there's a cutout for a skeleton key. Before we leave this room, let's make sure to look up. This is the first time that we are seeing an intact blaster medallion inside of this house. Now, of course, the ceiling fan is probably 100 years newer than this house, but we can appreciate that it still has this original detail up here. So let's go ahead and explore the rest of the house. Walking back here, the next bedroom is located off to this side. So come on through here. And now the wood type in here has changed. We can see that it's now much older and that the planks are much thinner. Now, of course, this room needs a lot of work, but you can really see the potential in here. And this actually gives us the chance to see some of the construction of this house kind of exposed and laid out. So of course, this is probably what the subfloor looks like underneath the hardwood over here. And over on this side, we can see this giant sill underneath the windows. So this room gets a lot of amazing natural light. Of course, there's an older radiator over here and there are two closets, one on this side and one over on this side, both with crystal doorknobs, both on the interior and exterior of the closets. And off to this side of the bedroom, is a door that will take us out to a deck. So let's go check this out real fast. Coming out here. And as we come out here, this is a really good chance for us to see this banister that we saw from the curb. So let's notice how spiky it is and also how this turns and spirals down to its base. And of course, this space is now two stories up and it looks over this beautiful neighborhood which is surrounded by mature trees. Coming back inside, we're now going to exit this room and see the final bedroom on this floor. So come on through here and let's just peek our heads inside of here. So of course, as we enter this room, this is a lot more ornate than what we've been seeing in the rest of the bedrooms up here. Let's take a moment to appreciate this intricate millwork that completely surrounds the space. Now, of course, there is a closet over here. It does appear to be missing its crystal doorknob, but it does retain its hardware, so that's really good. Now, over on this side, there are built-in shelves. Over here, there's this incredibly intricate fireplace that looks to have its historical cast iron inset that has possibly been gold leafed. Now that we've seen the entirety of the second floor, let's go ahead and check out the third floor. This is just a closet over here. Of course, it has a crystal doorknob, but we won't peek in there today. So come on through here and let's start spiraling our way up there.
As we make our way onto the third floor, now the ceilings have dropped a bit in this little landing area and there are tile floors. There's a bathroom off to this side and it contains a secret. We'll get to that in just a moment. And off to this side is attic storage. So we'll just peek in here real fast. Making our way forward, the space starts to be released into the dominant gable of the house. So this shoots up to the third floor and the fourth floor that we'll explore in just a moment. So of course we can see the exposed trusses with their really heavy hardware holding them all together, chandeliers suspended from the trusses and windows that look out over the front yard. And of course, surrounding the space is more attic storage. We see all of these smaller doors with their crystal doorknobs. And if we look above this, we can see more intricate molding, exposed timbers with the plaster and stucco. Over in this corner is actually a bar. So come take a look at this. I'm not sure if this top is vitrolite or if it's some sort of an other man-made tile or possibly stone. If you have any idea, please let me know down in the comments. I'm fairly curious. So coming out of this room, we are now going to pass by a bathroom that is divided up into a couple of rooms. So right here we have what would be considered, you know, the traditional water closet. You have the toilet and the sink. And we'll just take a quick peek in here. And making our way through here, we are now going to go up a couple of steps. And this takes us to where the bathtub jacuzzi is. So we can just kind of peek right here. Now we're going to disappear around this corner and this is going to take us up to the fourth floor. So let's go ahead and check this out. And this brings us up to a lofted space that overlooks the two-story room that we just saw. And this is a really good place to get a view of these trusses. We can see the windows centered on them at the very pitch of the gable. And we can also see the wooden pegs that are embedded into the trusses here. So that's just a really interesting bit of construction that we have not yet encountered while touring these types of homes. We've just walked out of the kitchen into the backyard, and this takes us to a stoop that overlooks the all brick patio. So if we come on down here, and of course, this is so magical, there are vines growing over these older timbers. And off to this side is the deck that we saw off of the back of the secret library or the secret den. And continuing through here, there is a pergola with old growth vines growing above it. And this is kind of centered in this space. And of course we can see the older brick walls. And let's just take a moment to really see all of this. I want to thank you both so much for opening up the doors here to allow us to film. Why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and your involvement with this property? Uh, Scott Gilbert, I'm with uh, Platinum Realty, but also with uh, Central West End Living. And uh, we love to both work here in the Central West End a lot, in the Central Corridor. And we really appreciate you coming today and highlighting this incredible home. And I'm Barbara Heiss and I'm with Remax Results and have been in the business for a couple of decades and have always loved the old homes. I have a, a blog where I concentrate on the central corridor prior to 170. Wonderful, and thank you once again so much for opening up the doors here. We've had an absolute pleasure exploring this house. Isn't it fun? Oh, it's so much fun. And everyone at home, please find a link to not only the listing description, but also to Barb's blog. It's really fascinating as she covers these old homes and their architectural styles. So go ahead and find both of those links down in the video description below. I really hope that you enjoyed this tour. Please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'll see you next time on This House.